Hey everyone, I'm your co-host Neil Chiradi. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Wisdom Words Podcast, where each week we talk to folks who have advice, life hacks, and tips, all of which take you one step closer to that feeling of hope. Hi everyone, I'm your guest co-host Tiana G. Hansen, filling in for Maureen O'Day, and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, today we have spiritual mentor, an intuitive medicine practitioner, and I hope I get this right, Nicole de Cristofaro. Is that right? Yes, it can be re- pronounced two different ways depending on what part of the world you're in, but you nailed it. <laughs> so good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, Nicole. It's We're my pleasure. To- thank you. Yeah, this has been an episode, and I'll keep this as brief as possible, but just to give slight background, (laughs) uh, a slight context to this, uh, some of our viewers have even, like, messaged me asking, hey, dude, what's up with the colored glasses that you've been wearing in the last few episodes? And I have been exploring color therapy recently, and that's why I was so keen on doing this episode. So can we... Yeah, start with that. What is color therapy or chromotherapy? Can you uh, give a quick explanation to our audience for those who don't know? So the way that I use color healing and color therapy in my practice is through the lens of energetic and vibrational medicine. So there's different methodologies of color healing and color therapy. And what I do is I use my psychometry or my intention and really tap into, I am accessing this color frequency and the properties of, and the characteristics of this color to stimulate a healing experience for my client. Does that make sense? (laughs) Totally. Okay. That's fascinating. Yeah. And I can give examples as we go along, but you know, I'm happy to explore more. Yeah. I I would love to know um, your experience or knowledge of chakras and how because I know that's very color based and I've worked my way kind of up through started with the root went all the way up to the crown and then auric chakra if you will um but yes how does that apply or do you do you work with that at all great question so but the the tradition of using certain colors for each chakra is a a very old tradition based on um, Vedic, uh, you know, um, practice of uh, Hindu healing and and modalities. Um, That isn't what I practice nowadays because modern humans, we've evolved. So the practices that say they were doing to bring balance or harmony to the chakras back then, thousands of years ago, they weren't dealing with all of the um, challenges we're dealing with modern life. So that probably was effective back then. And that's something that I know through my um, training as a medical intuitive, we, we talked about is how ancient teachings and ancient wisdom, we have to adapt to modern times. They're, they hold definitely some truth, but things change. So for example, I do have a meditation and it's a rainbow of colors and you go through each chakra and you use the colors that are traditional for that style of chakra healing. However, in the intuition medicine style, I always inquire what sh- what color frequency or colors does this chakra need to be- bring into harmony and healing or in alignment? And I often find that the colors aren't the typical like red for root chakra or, you know, those typical colors that we're told or the charts say. So it really, you know, depends on the person. Wow. Yeah. Uh, How do you, I mean, where does that root of all that begin? You said using certain colors for certain things and certain types of healing. How does, how do people go about like deciding or not deciding, finding out rather, what that is, how certain colors affect us, what we need at that particular time. How does all that work? Great question. (laughs) So in the style of teaching where I was trained, um, a lot of the 
information was based on over 30 plus years of clinical um, observation and research done by the founder of the school, um, Francesca McCartney, who founded the Academy of Intuition Medicine. And so a lot of her data is based on her work as a medical intuitive and also in the classroom with students she's trained. So, you know, when, when the uh, majority of people say experience a certain response to a color, you can pretty safely say on that data, okay, this color, like lavender is calming, right? The color of lavender is calming for people. People feel that. But there are, there's uh, in the color schematics and frequency of colors, there's certain um, sounds associated. There's different um, uh, depths and range to each color. So for example, if you want a stimulating color, something to get you like really excited and feel energized, you would use the red color. And it's not because red is typically this bright, vibrant color. It's where it falls in the chart for the frequency of that color. So there's a lot of data and research about this that's really fascinating to, to learn. Your interviews, you also talked about in there, like how certain colors also we, associate our memories with them and is that how we have like certain colors that are our personal favorites and appeal to us and others that we just don't like or don't care for so can you go into that a little bit how does that part work or what attracts us to certain colors or makes them our favorites and other sure. colors not so much and, and that, that was fascinating me, for me to understand, too, because I had an aversion to a certain color. <laughs> and when I understood why, um, you know, everything is energy. So if you have a memory and experience and there are locations or people or things in your surroundings that are attached to the memory, it's the energy that you're having a reaction to, right? It's it's it's. It's, sign it's signaling to your nervous system and your physiology, there's an uh, energetic response to that. And so, for example, I gave, I, I think in that interview, I gave the example of how I had an aversion to a yellow <laughs> color. And yeah. it was during my childhood, there's a house we lived in and the kitchen was painted this bright yellow. And I experienced a lot of challenges at, at that time. I was really dealing with some, you know, emotional struggles and just, you know, you know, the self doubt and all the things that as a young person I was going through. And so I didn't know that that my aversion to that color was stored in the memories of that. Yeah. And, and another example that was uh, interesting was I had a client who had an aversion to orange, hated the color orange. And when I, you know, um, asked her, it was, I think it was a, just not even, it was just a casual conversation. Are there any colors that you have an aversion to? And she told me orange. I said, oh, well, tell me about that. Like, do, do you remember um, a moment, a, a time in your life where something happened and there, the color orange was present at that time? And she, she, it took a while for her to put it together. But what she found was it was associated with um, a grandmother who wore this orange lipstick and who was not a very nice grandmother. <laughs> and she had very unpleasant memories of being around this, you know, family member, you know, and I was like, oh, well, let's work on healing that. And so we um, worked on the trauma and the, the emotional healing so that she, we can neutralize that from her physiology and then, you know, eventually orange wouldn't bother her anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's so powerful that color has that effect on our psychology. I mean, I've always heard as a writer, I know um, I had this book or I've heard somewhere at least that uh, they mark your papers up in red ink. So because it kind of alerts your brain like, ooh, bad. Um, and we're just and but I've never I mean, I guess I was assumed memories can associate with colors too and how especially traumatic ones um and neil and i actually started talking about color therapy on a live we recently did on instagram and i was kind of struck with the revelation that color is just light 
being reflected back and we all kind of maybe experience it a bit differently. Um, but do you have like any belief? I mean, how did you get into like the intuitive part of it? Um, and I don't know, just any comments on that? I'm very yes. interested to know. Yeah, you know, it is. And, and it's, and, and again, it goes down to the basic foundation that we're all energy, right? So we're yeah. made, we're frozen light. That's what we are. That's oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's what matter is, right? Frozen light. Wow. And can you imagine what colors we are? <laughs> you know? Wow. And yeah, like the auras and all of yeah. that. Yeah. And that's what's I think really cool. And I know some people, I just want to point out though, there's some people that are challenged with color, right? People yes. who are colorblind. That people. was my next question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll talk about that in a minute um, because I yeah. think it's important. And I know like when I first started um, tapping into the healing arts, I was a little frustrated because I couldn't like clairvoyantly see things. It was hard for me to visualize. And I have a student that I work with that has aphantasia where she cannot, like you say apple, she cannot bring an image of an apple into her mind's eye. And so you, you really need to work out. Wow. Yeah. Right. It, you need, we really need to be able to work with all of your senses so you can feel a color. And I've done this with my students. I've had them like hold up their hands and use their hand chakras for psychometry. And even on a Zoom screen, I will hold up like say a card that's purple or blue or whatever. And I say, close your eyes and just feel into this. Let me know what you're experiencing. And if you see something great, but if you don't use your other senses and it's amazing how many people can experience a color in the same way, just through a video screen without, you know, knowing what the color is. And that's why I think, wow. you know, it's really important. We understand that the, it, the energy behind it all. Wow. Yeah. I'm not that. First of all, that was amazing. I'm blown away. Like, <laughs> that in. Yeah. And then the color blindness. So, what happens with that? Like, uh, do people just experience it differently? Or here's the thing energy follows your thoughts and intentions. If I say to you, imagine, sense, intend, use the color blue for this healing on your body part or chakra or whatever. All you need is that intention that you're accessing the frequency of blue and it will happen. Um, for example, a cobalt blue, we all I think we all know what cobalt blue is, right? That has an anesthetizing, numbing, soothing um, experience for people. So I use cobalt blue if I have a headache, like I imagine affirm use the color blue and i just like imagine i'm just like pouring cobalt blue on my forehead and it's soaking into my body and it going to all the parts that there's tension or throbbing and it's amazing how it works but you also have to get out of your head about it and like be like is this gonna work is this not like there's that tendency yeah. to get mental men mentalize everything right so it won't work for you if you're if you do that <laughs> <laughs> When I first started exploring color therapy, because my counselor said it would help with clinical depression a lot. If, um, but one of the things that when I started looking online and if you Google, there's so many articles, but so many articles just give generic answers of, oh, well, when you're feeling this, just use this color or wear this color in your glasses or have this wallpaper. And it, is there like, certain traits that work for everyone in when it comes to certain colors like you said blue makes you calm and affects you know lessens your headache or do we always do we need to explore that and find out individually what works is there a generic uh, effect of colors as far as you know working for everybody or is it different for every individual so there are the, you know, the clinical observations, as I mentioned, of like this color, the vast majority of people experience this. So that's, that's there, that data and that research is there. However, I will always say that if you find that a color isn't giving you the desired effects, be open to experimenting and trying other colors. So sometimes I go through the rainbow of colors and just kind of explore how my mood shifts 
any physical experiences I'm having, you know, because maybe you're not aware that you have a malillumination of a certain color in your system currently, and you're la it's like a vitamin you're lacking. Like, oh, I need more vitamin blue. <laughs> <laughs> and when you bring in that color, you're like, oh, this feels nice. Like I feel calm and like relaxed. And not to say that every color will give everyone the same desired result. I think it's a culmination of all the colors and how they work um, in, in together synergistically. I when I see videos on YouTube of this too, where cer certain people who have trouble reading or write who have dyslexia, they put down a blue like transparent paper over the book or purple or whatever color works for them, and it becomes easier. And that's scientifically proven. Like they say, it really, really works. Do those kind of things? Do, is that also intuitive and inner work or is that more scientifically proven that I think it's a combination of both and if there was research done on the energetics let, let's say most people that uh, struggle with struggle with dyslexia um, have a malillumination of the color blue in their system that's why that bringing in the color blue helps that problem or that issue um because we're all meant we're meant to use all the colors because they each have something to offer and, and it is it's like you know your diet filled with all the colors in your foods and you know making sure your body is absorbing all the minerals and vitamins right so color offers that same spectrum for health and vibrancy and well-being so i i'm curious to know if they did a study an energetic study and you know an energy healer or somebody was actually observing each of these people and going yeah there's they're lacking the spectrum of blue in their energetic field and that's why it's okay. attributing to their dyslexia or concentration or whatever it is that they're dealing with it's every article i read they always say the doctors and the fda continue to dismiss it completely saying it's just a new age hippie thing <laughs> no maybe there's a little bit of difference if you put this color on or that but it really doesn't work what why do you think that is what why is there so much dismissal when at least certain aspects of color therapy definitely have scientific data to back it up well, a lot of the research I follow is they are like people in the science world that are open to other understandings or conclusions. I feel that a lot of the Western medicine that we are, you know, following in the, in the articles written are really, you know, so narrow in their scope and there's so much that they don't understand about energy healing, vibrational healing, you know, even just the functional medicine part of, you know, the the medical branch that if they don't understand it or they haven't witnessed it themselves, they're going to dismiss it, right? And right. nowadays though, there's so much more research being done and there's so many books by doc, you know, physicists and neuroscientists, you know, there's so much more, I think proving that hey you guys don't have the full picture over here you have really what this skinny you know page in your medical encyclopedia that you were given in college that's really outdated what are some of uh your favorite colors and and how do they affect you do you have certain colors that you use in your day-to-day -day lifestyle for certain goals you know certain times of the day if you need to calm down or if you need to concentrate hard how do what do you what colors do you utilize specifically in your life for all of those activities or something. Yes, great question. And and wow, like I really, I love, you know, the color uh, purple is definitely works for me because it's about spiritual study and really um, the uh, spiritual realm. It's really helping me. It helps me tap into that higher realm of spiritual knowing and inner wisdom. So that's a color I definitely use a lot. And, and I know if you look at um, crystal therapy, right? Amethyst. Um, a lot of people yes. tend to gravitate towards amethyst and there's a reason why um, because of the color that it is purple, right? And there's, I know there's other types of amethyst that aren't purple. 
Um, but that's one color. And then gold is one of those universal, it's like what, what Windex is to the Greeks in that movie, <laughs> My Big Fat Greek Wedding. <laughs> gold is a do it all. Um, I use really? gold to, uh, I use a lot of gold for protection. So emotional protection, um, bringing my uh, body and, and my mind, body and spirit into harmony, um, allowing me to access higher frequencies. It raises my vibration. So one of the cool things that I use is to call back all my energy from wherever it's been, you know, scattered about in the physical or astral realm. And I imagine yeah. casting a golden net and only my energy is being attracted into this golden net and coming back to me and bringing me all my energy back into present time. And so I use gold all the time. I use gold also to ground um, where I live or where I'm staying. I imagine golden pillars in each corner of the room and then like a golden bubble around me for protection. So I would say those two colors I use a lot. And then the cobalt blue is what I use for a lot of pain, inflammation, and those types of things if I'm experiencing that. Huh. That's, that's amazing. Wow, that's really I've heard purple for protection as well. So that's interesting. Um, a lot of like protection colors and I love purple and turquoise and silver. Not sure the relationship of those, but. <laughs> well, interesting thing about silver is it does have to do with personal power. And however, Ooh. silver can also attract things to you. So it may not always Ooh. work in your favor if you have a tendency, oh, no. <laughs> well, if you have, you know, if you don't have strong or protection or boundaries, you can pick up some, you know, uh, hitchhikers. <laughs> so yes. I, unsavory energies. Yeah. yeah, I tend not to work with silver just as a protection for myself. But if it feels right for you and you like it, you know, definitely. That's the whole thing is like. You have to really trust your own intuition with this practice because there's no right or wrong way. Um, it's what is unique to you. Yeah. But it's also good to be aware of that. Like I did not realize it was so attractive. So if I'm going to be working on, with it or envisioning it, I need to maybe do some boundary work beforehand or um, something like that. Yeah. Or blend the silver with gold. Like Ooh, yes. imagine you've got red. gold and silver. Oh, another yeah. color I wanted to mention is copper. We all know our homes are, and our electricity are, use copper for grounding. If you have, a tr if you have really a hard time being grounded, um, you feel like you're just always like disconnected, you know, not in your body, imagine that you're connected to the center of the earth through copper. Um, and it helps too, as a release of um, being able to expel energy, you know, whether you're feeling, you know, anxiety or any kind of emotional energy that you don't want, um, the copper can help ground that out just like it does in a building or a house. I've always been very into very like bright, vivid colors. And I know, and I've always felt a little bit self-conscious about that because I know a lot of like modern days very minimalist and like soft tones sort of thing but I've very always liked like the big bold uh I don't know and I'm, I'm not sure if that's just a personality thing or if like uh, obviously like a big bold color is will evoke a different emotion than like pastels or something different um so do you experience that with certain people being attracted to like different shades in general or yeah I find that super fascinating because it really tells me a lot about someone from not just their personality but also what's going on energetically for them because um I, I remember a time in my life where I was so I had so many brown clothes that my friend was like what what's the deal with all this brown <laughs> like your hair is brown your clothes are brown like what's going on brown, brown, brown. and when I look back I realized why I was drawn to that color and I probably because I needed a lot of like grounding in my life at that time so it was a very earthy, grounding, like nurturing color for me. So I was like picking everything to wear that was brown. So 
you know, you can look at that, like, why am I drawn to this color right now? What, what's going on? And, and look up what the properties are. So, for example, you said um, you were into turquoise. So turquoise is, is a very playful color. It's a very, like, light, like, it reminds me of, like, someone wanting to fly a kite or something. Like, I would see that color. Um, maybe that's telling you you need more playfulness in your life. Yes, I've been called out. <laughs> <laughs> turquoise <God. laughs> I love it. Oh, See, your God, higher like, self knows. Yes. Your higher self knows. <laughs> Always. And that is an intuitive Always. message I keep getting is more play, more play. And I just got a new job where I'll be able to play more. So it's coming. It's yeah. good. Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Neil, give her a color. What what color are you attracted to? Can we do that, um, Nicole? Is that yeah? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, my my favorite, I usually it's always been kind of bluish, but it tends to vary from time to time. I've noticed that when I was younger, I really liked brighter blues, more aqua, more, and then I then it for a while it was more navy blue, then it was dark. So I'm not sure what what does that mean when it the shades of the color your favorite color keep changing over the years. Is there any significance to that? Well, each of those blue colors in the spectrum does have its own unique characteristics. So you mentioned like navy blue. So that's kind of a really, like if I want to go into meditation, I would bring in navy blue. It kind of um, puts me in this meditative state. Um, right. So maybe you needed that then because you needed to like calm yourself and get centered or something. Um, if you were looking to like bring in like an aqua, um, that's another calming mental and emotionally calming color. So there's a theme wow. there, Neil, <laughs> your, your body was telling you what it needed for, for healing. Ooh, wow. Wow. I never thought about it this way, but it, once you say it, it makes so much sense when like my history with mental health issues, struggles and all that, it makes so much sense now that you put it out that way. And wow. Okay. And also, <laughs> I think that's yeah. common too, that as we grow and move different situations, and maybe we're not into like aware of it, maybe it's more intuitive, but our favorite yeah. colors change and the ones we're attracted to like turquoise for me has always been throughout my life, but purple is a recent thing. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting to like see that and connect it. And that's probably where you bring in your healing, Nicole, right? Your and yeah. divine flow healing. Is that your what your business is called? Yeah, divine flow energy healing with the website's divine flow healing to make it short. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I use a lot of color. Like yesterday I had a session um, with a little boy who's struggling with a lot of allergies, and his parents wanted me to see like is there something that he's allergic to that is just bombarding, you know, what is the deal? And, right. you know, when I work with my healing guide um, to help me uh, determine what the causation of, of these ailments are, uh, oftentimes they'll give me the colors or, you know, or a color. It's usually more than one. And um, I got, I definitely gave them a prescription and told them, look, imagine, cause he's little, he's like three years old. I said, imagine yeah. him being wrapped in this, you know, colorful, like purple came in and um, blue, the cobalt blue came in for him too. And I said, just like when you, he goes out in his day, like imagine him wrapped in this blue and purple blanket and um, you can intend that you're his parents, you're offering that for him because he's too little to say, yes, I accept this healing. You can gift that to him and go, will, will you take your blue and purple blanket with you today? Oh. And if this is an imaginary blanket, people, we're not giving, yeah. you know, a real blanket. <laughs> and even I told them to put, um, I go, Do, can you put a filter over the light in the room? Or is there a night light or something we can plug in with a color? And because I was getting definitely another, like a violet color to use in his bedroom. And they said, oh, wow, we have a nightlight. He wanted blue. I said, great. Well, let's trade it out for purple um, and see how he does. You know, so that was like part of his healing prescription was using color. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's, amazing. That's just yeah. so cool. And it's something I think we probably intuitively know, but don't hear 
because I hadn't heard of color therapy until Neil mentioned it. And I was immediately fascinated. And then I was like, oh, I can't wait to talk to Nicole about this because yeah. it's very- I love really talking about it because I do feel, I feel it's not utilized to its potential. You mentioned so. a lot of times visualization, right? And imagining certain things and certain colors. Are there, apart from that, what are some other methods you would recommend to utilizing colors? You mentioned night lights, wallpaper, possibly glasses, or what are yeah. some of the more common ways we can incorporate certain colors? Especially if it, there are times when visualization can be a bit difficult depending on our mind space and, you know. Yeah, so, you know, I mentioned the copper um, as one of the, tools that you can use, say you, you need help with your grounding, you want help with uh, dispelling, releasing emotional energy, you know, a lot of um, crystal shops and other metaphysical stores have those copper balls that you can hold in your hand, or you can wear a copper necklace, like think of your, you know, everything that you could possibly wear, so your clothing and jewelry, um, colors you put in your room, or even if you don't want to get permanent with it, like put up a something that is a decorative piece or pillows or blankets. Like I have, it's kind of funny. I have this blue and yellow fleecy blanket that I got. Um, my dad was a big UCLA fan. And when he passed, um, my stepmother asked, you know, do you want any of his things and this and that. And I saw the, he had bought all these blankets. He was kind of a hoarder with that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, um, so this like it's like a bright blue and yellow the UCLA if anyone knows California uh, colors and um, I when I put this blanket on I feel really good not just because it's my you know rem reminding me of the de my dad but the colors I like because I like yellow now <laughs> so you know things like that wearing like a shawl or or something around you and um, even like you know YouTube now is so like endless in what you can find there. Like say you're like, oh, I really need to like stare at blue. Like type in like blue, you know, or bring a swatch of a paint, a paint chip and like spend a few minutes just holding it and looking at it and um, really absorbing it. Imagine that you're absorbing the healing properties of this color into your system. So like, I remember I found like, um, ocean like sea glass before like it, i oh, found like that's my favorite yeah oh, my and i found like this bright red piece once and i was like so like oh my god this is the coolest because you usually find other colors that aren't you know wow. red and um i saved that forever i don't know where it is now i probably through all my purging and moving i got rid of it <laughs> but like I was drawn to it and I think it was, yeah. you know, again, something I needed. I needed more passion and vitality in my life that, you know, at that point. And that's why I had it. Where can people um, find you? Like what's your website and all that? Give us all the information. Yeah. Um, so divineflowhealing.com is my website. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Divine Flow Healing, TikTok, um, the, yeah, I'm kind of just getting started in TikTok, so not a lot there, but Facebook, Instagram are kind of the main ones. Uh, there's some videos yeah. that I have on YouTube as well. Um, it's Divine Flow Energy Healing. If you look me up, you'll find it there. But um, I have, um, as a gift to your listeners, I want to give them a, a, a rainbow of color healing meditation. So it's a chakra balancing meditation and it is using the traditional chakra colors however i invite you to tune into each chakra and go what color is this really needing right now and maybe play around and experiment and use that meditation in a different way right absolutely and we will link all of that in the description of this so they'll everyone awesome. should have access to it so thank you well, this has been such an inspiring conversation and, you know, and deepened my knowledge of colors and I'm sure anyone else who watches this. So thank you so, so much for coming on and doing this. My really. pleasure. I love this and I'd happy to be happy to do part two with you all. This is super so fun. Much. I love yeah. the questions. I, I'm really like anything I can do to help support people with this is my pleasure. 
thank you nicole thank i've you learned so much, so much. yeah <laughs> thank yeah. you Thank you so much for joining us today on Daily Wisdom Words. Thank you, Nicole, for sharing your wisdom on color therapy. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. Thank you, everyone, once again, and we will see you right here next week at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Goodbye. Bye.